So I've got a couple more things to wire up on the front end of the bike. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So I've really only got two things left to wire in the front end of the bike. Uh, the headlight, which I explained in the previous episode, I'm not going to show how I wire this because this headlight is completely unique to my application and uh, won't be helpful to anyone else who doesn't have this exact headlight. And since this thing isn't like some super common thing, I got it from Dime City Cycles, you know, I'm not going to go through that. But we do have the front brake switch to wire up to run the brake light in the back. And there's also another set of wires up here that I just want to explain what they are. So front brake switch is right here and we are orange and white. Here are those two wires coming off of my harness. Don't know why this bit of red is on here. I think I'll... I don't know if that's heat shrink or not, taking it off. And so in my particular case, the original brake switch is broken and unrepairable in uh, the condition that this thing is in. Uh, so what I've opted to do, because I'm going with the stock master cylinder, is to do one of these uh, pressure switches that essentially replaces the banjo bolt on the hydraulic brake line and you put this switch in, it is a bolt and the fluid flows through it and then when you pull the lever and the pressure increases uh, it flips a switch in here. So I've got two wires coming down from that. They are just two yellow leads. It really doesn't matter polarity here. Uh, you know, a closed circuit is a closed circuit and an open is an open and it doesn't matter what direction through this switch. And so these are the two yellows that I'm going to be hooking up with the orange and the white. Um, just to confirm that these are indeed the correct wires, uh, all I got to do is put them together and we'll see the uh, brake light going in the back. And so my wires are a little short here. I could stretch it and make it work, but I'm pulling on the wire and I don't want to do that. Plus, this is going to turn and so we want to have a little bit of slack. Uh, I'm going to have to extend these wires a bit. Okay, so I just extended the wires from my switch down and have uh, twisted them to the orange and white for now. Not soldering yet, checking before that things are working and if it works, then we button it all up with solder. soldering I go. Okay guys, I got the headlight wired up and uh, again I skipped it for you but uh, I can explain a little bit about what I did. Uh, first little demonstration I guess. So headlight switch off, low beam, power on, uh, headlights on, Backlights come on, headlight comes on. Then we go to high beam. We got a high beam indicator there. We're getting high beam up there. And then this blue light 
uh, was a little tricky for me. So I was wondering, like, why the heck couldn't I get that thing to um, light up when I put power to, you know, I tried every combination of the four leads coming out of this. Oh, hi. There you are. And um, couldn't figure out how to get that thing lit, so I took it apart and realized that the one lead coming to this, the hot lead, you know, was a wire and the rest is ground. And so it wasn't working for me because I was going straight from my battery to those leads to determine what was what and I wasn't powering the ground. Well now I have the ground powered because I'm tied in with a test lead here and uh, lo and behold I get that blue light there. So I've got two high beam indicators which is kind of cool I guess. I mean not that well, I guess the backlights are on for low beam too, but... Anywho, headlight works. So that leaves one more lead up here that needs some explaining. Two brown wires coming off of the um, wiring harness that lead to a female bullet connector and don't seem to have a mate of any kind anywhere. Let's look on the wiring diagram as to what this is. I want to make sure I cover it. So here is that brown wire. It does indeed just simply terminate up in the headlight and goes nowhere. The point of it, it comes down to this switch and when the switch is in the on position, the gray wire, which is the, the backlights, so for headlight, if you had headlights on, then the gray wire is getting hot and that hot will go to the brown wire and, uh, you know, make it hot. So that brown lead is for some auxiliary lights if you wanted to install them later on and they were thinking ahead for that. At least that's my theory. Tell me in a comment if you think there's some other purpose to it. And so, just to get this all cleaned up now and hidden away, I'm going to wrap it with uh, electrical tape, but not that cheap plasticky stuff. Uh, I don't like that. You know, I'll use that around actual connections to insulate them, but for just wrapping a harness, what I prefer is this Tessa brand. I think you can see that, yeah. Get yourself some of this. It's woven like... Um, those of you in the Northland might be familiar with hockey tape. Uh, this isn't hockey tape, but it's kind of like it. It's, it's really nice. And uh, that's what I'm going to wrap all this up in. I'll give you a quick look afterward. And then, so we just want to see how clean this all is after I've gotten things buttoned up here. And see if, uh, if our tank fits on okay. A little snugger, but I think it's working. Let me tie up the back end. I went out with the boys last night. I said I'd be home by Okay, well, good enough. I don't want to get too tight here because I have to take it apart again. But pretty tidy, I guess. You know, you can see a thing or two, but not too much. Horn wiring, of course, we're going to see that. And, you know, for the most part, those wires are disappearing into that black negative space, which is good. The, you know, all eyes are going to be on the tank and the shiny stuff, is the hope. I don't know. I wish it was maybe a little tidier up here, but, you know, these cables got to go where they got to go. This has to go where it needs to go. Um, I think that's going to be it. Let me know what you guys think. So what remains to be done? I have two grounds here from the regulator and rectifier. I have two grounds here that are going to the uh, wiring harness in general. So everything up front and rear tail lights all depend on these grounds being buttoned away. So I think what I'm going to do is probably just run these up here 
and sand some paint and I'll bolt those down to there. Uh, these I can do the same thing back here on the frame and then just to make sure because the only ground I have right now running from the battery to the bike is the negative going down to the engine which is that guy right there and you know the engine may be grounded to the frame pretty well um, but I think it would be beneficial to take just one lead off of the negative and tie it into the frame back here in the hoop somewhere. Uh, you know, I might just drill through here, get rid of some paint, and just make sure that I've got a good ground, uh, a little short piece of wire. And so I'm gonna do that, but I've run out of time for doing the video here this weekend. Uh, the next time you see me and this cafe racer, uh, those ground wires will be hooked up. So what we accomplished here today was to hook up the front brake switch, which we did, and I got the headlight running, and then uh, we explained what that brown wire is for, I think, and um, how I'm going to ground to the frame. Again, I'll do that off camera. So if you guys like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up, and uh, if you would like to become a monk, subscribe. Thanks for watching.